Hi everyone and welcome to this mini lesson on documenting the internal control processes. We're going to do that through flowcharting. So if you're looking at the Leong textbook, the fifth edition, then I'm looking at figure 9.4 on page 389. All right. And the first thing I want to talk about is the basic flowchart shapes. Okay, so what sort of shapes are we going to start off with? And you'll notice that there are a number of different shapes in uh, the actual figure 9.4. I'm going to talk about the main ones that we use in flowcharting. So the first one I'm going to talk about is that shape there. Okay. And this is our document shape. So anything that's on paper, we use this little shape here as a document. Now, if I have a document with multiple copies, I just need to draw them like this. So there's the original, then we have our second copy and our third copy. All right, so that's documents. One other thing we're going to use is we're going to talk about where documents get stored. So we know for most organizations as part of internal controls, documents need to get stored somewhere and they typically get stored in files. So the upside down triangle is our file. All right. And our file can be sorted a number of different ways. It can be sorted numerically, uh, by date, or alphabetically. All right. Good rule, every document at some point does need to go into a file and store it away somewhere. Uh, besides having documents on paper, we can also have documents or information stored inside databases. So anytime we put information into a database, or a file on a computer, we use the little cylinder. All right. So in the textbook, there's also a magnetic tape. We're just going to use this one. So this is for any online database or accounting system. All right. So these are items. What we're also going to look at is processes that happen within the business. Right. And the first process I'm going to talk about is this little one here. So that shape is when I do something manually. All right. So that sort of manual shape could be something like a bank reconciliation. It could be a matching. It could be a manual authorization. All right. So is anything manual. If I'm doing some sort of process, so perhaps I'm inputting an order, right, then I do it here in a rectangle. So that's an online or a computer process. Okay, so that might be posting journal entries, for example. All right. There's some other shapes as well uh, about manual input. Um, so if you're typing into a computer, um, then there is a shape, but I tend to just use the rectangular one. All right. Then the other one we tend to use is the start and the stop. So we have the start or the stop button. Okay. And then the last ones I want to talk about are connectors. All right. So these are connectors. And so that's when our flowchart goes over multiple pages. So I might say, look, something happens, a process, and it goes here to point one, right? And then over here on a different page where number one might flow through, I'll start with number one going into my various shapes. Right? So those are the basic shapes um, that I get students to learn uh, in terms of doing flowcharts. So let's go to an actual example. I did forget one other shape earlier. Uh, the last shape I want to talk about is 
the decision process. All right? So sometimes we'll have a decision to make, a choice. And when we're doing that, we use the diamond with usually a yes, oops, yes or no options. All right, so that could be something like credit approval, um, is a manager approval required, um, reaching some sort of preset credit limit. So we do use uh, decisions uh, also in flowcharts using that uh, yes, no um, decision process. So the example we're going to do is this one right here. So we've got a furniture company in Brookdale, New South Wales. The salesperson records all customer orders on a pre-numbered sales form. Uh, she keeps a copy and a copy is sent to the accounting department and another copy is sent to manufacturing. Manufacturing makes the furniture and prepares a shipping manifest of goods can be delivered to the customer. The original manifest is sent with the goods to the customer. They file a copy numerically and a second copy goes to the accounting department. When the accounting receives the order and the shipping manifest, they create an invoice on the system. So let's have a go at drawing this flow chart here. So I'm going to start with the fact that we've got the salesperson doing the first task. Alright, so we have So we always like to label who is doing the task so that I understand exactly um, what the areas of responsibility are. It helps me see segregation of duties. Okay. So a salesperson records all customer orders on a pre-numbered sales order form. So this is a manual process. Okay. So my manual process shape, and I have to put some sort of description in there. So I'm going to write down here record order right. and she does that on a sales order form pre number sales order form okay now the idea with pre-numbering as well allows um, us to track exactly how many invoices. It's like raffle ticket books. So raffle ticket books are pre-numbered so that we don't have any duplicates. We've got pre-numbered sales order forms so that there's no duplicates as well. Now remember, she keeps the original and a copy goes to the accounting department and another copy goes to manufacturing. All right, so we have copies. All right, so she keeps one in a file. Um, now, I'm going to assume here that that file is numerical, right, because they are pre-numbered. Okay, so we've got the manufacturing department. And we've also got the accounting department. So we've got those two departments, uh, and I know that one copy goes across to accounting, and one copy goes to manufacturing. All right, so here I'm going to use those little connectors from before that I talked about. Okay, now theoretically I could draw a line all the way over here, but I'm going to say, okay, accounting receives that pre-numbered sales invoice, all right now, the second, third invoice goes to the manufacturing department. All right. So manufacturing gets in this invoice here. They go and construct the furniture and prepare a shipping manifest so that the goods can be delivered to the customer. All right. So they prepare a shipping manifest. All right, so we've got a document, and that document, there are three copies of it, so shipping manifest, second copy, third copy. All right, 
one copy goes to the customer. Right, so anything that goes external, I use this little ellipse here. To the customer. Right, and then one copy is filed numerically with the manufacturing department. Okay. Numerically. A second copy goes to the accounting department. Alright, I've already used connective one and two. Connector number three there. Okay. So the original goes to the customer, one copy with the manufacturing department, one copy goes to accounting. So accounting has documents from spot number one and spot number three. All right, so when the account receives the order and the shipping manifest, an invoice is created on the computer system. Okay, so we've got order, all right, so then they go onto the computer. It needs to go like that. And they create the invoice. Now, it does this into some sort of computer system. I'm going to put that on the side here. It could be an invoice system or an accounting system. And then they also, uh, when an, an invoice is printed, and when the invoice is created, an automatic journal entry is made in sales and accounts receivable. All right. So to create the invoice, all right, then they also print the invoice they tell the system to print one which means you get an invoice down here okay and they also have automatic journal entries journal entries okay are made into the sales and accounts receivable system so we have some sort of database for sales some sort of journal entry for accounts receivable. Now, I don't know whether they're into the same or different systems. I'm just putting them all together. Uh, an original invoice is sent to the customer, and then a copy is filed with the original order and shipping manifest by invoice number. Okay, so that's the original. That's the copy. The original goes to the customer. All right, now we're going to need some extra lines. It's going to be a little bit tricky. The copy goes into a file that's filed numerically along with that one and more. Okay, I might not have enough room. Here we go. That one. Alright, so our flowcharts aren't exactly that neat to draw at the beginning, uh, but I've basically followed the task through and drawn my flowchart. So it's always a good idea to go back, make sure that you haven't missed anything. But that's our sample flowchart. Uh, now you'll be required to go away and draw the flowcharts for homework.